Before calculating heating and cooling loads in Revit, you want to make sure that the construction types are correct. You can control the construction types for each space. Let's take a look at how these settings are controlled. I'll open the Level 1 Floor Plan view and then select a space. In the Properties palette, we can see all the parameters for the space. There are several parameters here that are important when calculating heating and cooling loads. I'll scroll down to the Energy Analysis section. Pay attention to the Construction Type parameter. Currently, it is set to Building. I'll click in the Construction Type field and click the button to the far right. This opens the Construction Type dialog. In this dialog, the construction types appear in the list on the left and the available analysis properties for each type appear in the panel on the right. The only construction type in this project at the moment is the default building type and it cannot be modified. In the analysis properties section, pay attention to the note at the top. It states that by default Analysis properties are generated from information in model elements. Properties of analytic constructions are used when override is selected or model information is missing. Essentially, this is saying that if you want to use the analysis properties in the model elements, such as walls, roofs, and windows, you should not select the override checkbox. If you want to use the model information, you will need to coordinate with the architect to make sure that they are inputting the correct information into their building components. If not, you can control the analytic construction in this dialog and then choose to override the model information. The default construction type is set to override each category. You can create additional construction types as needed since various parts of the building will more than likely have different construction types. In the construction types area, I'll choose New to create a new construction type. Revit displays the name dialog. I'll name this type Construction 1 and then click OK. Now we can either modify the analytic construction for the various categories or leave them set to the default building construction. When you click in one of the analytic construction fields, a drop-down arrow appears. For example, I'll click in the field for roofs and then expand the drop-down. Now we can see the various roof constructions. Each one has a basic description of the roof as well as a U-value. You should make sure that you not only select a construction with the appropriate U-value, but also the appropriate construction, as Revit takes into account the various layers in the construction. Revit uses the RTS, or Radiant Time Series method, that follows the specifications of the ASHRAE Handbook of Fundamentals. I'll select a roof construction and then expand the drop-down for exterior walls. There are numerous options here to specify the construction of exterior walls. Once again, we can see a basic description as well as the U-value. Now let's look at the available options for windows. I'll expand the drop-down for exterior windows. Here, we can see a description of the window construction and the U-value. However, the solar heat gain coefficient is also listed for the available options. Remember that if you want to use the analytic construction information from the model elements, you should deselect the override checkbox for a specific category. Also, if any of the information is missing from the model elements, the heating and cooling load analysis tool will use the value specified here in this dialog. You can use the All or None buttons to quickly select all or none of the categories. There is also another parameter available here. You can specify the shading factor for exterior windows. 
Once you have all the analytic construction values specified, you can create a new construction type based on another construction type by using the duplicate button. This is helpful, for example, when all of the construction in a portion of the building is the same except for the roof. I'll click OK to close this dialog. If you want to control the construction type for multiple spaces at once, you can easily do so from the Heating and Cooling Loads dialog. To access this dialog, switch to the Analyze ribbon and click Heating and Cooling Loads on the Reports and Schedules panel. In this dialog, you can see a preview of the model on the left and several parameters on the right. There are actually two tabs, General and Details. Select Details. With the Spaces radio button selected, the spaces are organized in a tree structure into the zones in which they were assigned. You can expand a zone to see the spaces assigned to that zone. Then, you can use the Control or Shift key to select multiple spaces. With spaces selected, the construction type parameter becomes available. To change the construction type, click the button next to this field on the right. This opens the construction type dialog and you can select one of the available construction types for the selected spaces.